Pay off debt or invest? There is a straightforward mathematical answer to that question that it's usually better to invest. Yet, it is one of the most commonly debated topics. Like, for example, if you follow Dave Ramsey, he puts a great emphasis on paying down your mortgage, but only after you save 15%. And it actually works for a lot of people. In my opinion, the whole debate happens because along with the math, you also have to consider psychology and emotions. So in this video, we're gonna cover psychological aspects, the mindset of the investor, and then I will do an actual calculation of someone who decides to crush the debt versus someone who keeps it while investing in a boring way. That way, you can see the difference in the net worth and make your own choice knowingly. So first, let's talk about when you should be even considering this decision. On a financial side, it's pretty straightforward. If you have a high interest debt, like credit card debt, that most of the people pay around 17 to 20% to 30%, or you have a bad car loan, this decision is not even yours to make. You should be trying your best to pay off your debt because right now the bank is making a lot of money off you and you won't be able to beat them with your investments. Before you even decide to invest and start looking for opportunities, meeting with financial advisor, you first gotta examine your mindset. Because what you wanna be, you wanna be as emotionless as possible when you make financial choices. You want it to come from a place of complete calm. And to do that, usually number one requirement is you need to have enough money to invest where when you do it, you're not constantly worried about it and even if you lose some, it's not gonna break your financial situation. So, if right now you live paycheck to paycheck with no emergency fund, this is again not a decision for you. Your first priority should be to make sure you have an emergency fund that is easily accessible and hopefully also work on your earning potential. The reason for that is by investing without having a proper emergency fund, you put yourself at risk of not being able to pay your bills if something happens. This adds a lot of stress to your life. And again, when you make the decisions in this stressed and cash strapped way, you usually make poor financial choices. That is why you saw a bunch of people investing in Bitcoin by leveraging the little equity they had. The next thing you should consider is what kind of investor or human being are you? Can you handle a little bit of risk? Because when you invest while having debt, by default, it is more risky because if your investment doesn't work out, you'll be stuck with that debt with nothing to show for it. So if you're a naturally anxious, worried person that will obsessively check your portfolio and every time you wake up, you're gonna think about all of this debt like weighing on your shoulders, then just concentrate on paying for your debt, yes. Mathematically, it is better to invest, but again, if you do it from the stressed kind of a mindset, you're gonna make poor choices. The flip side, if you think 7% is boring and you're willing to take a lot of risks, you're always looking for that next thing that's just gonna blow up and make you a millionaire, this decision is also not for you to make because you're already incurring a lot of risk and by using that as your leverage to take that risk, you you're multiply it. So, of course, it's your choice to be an aggressive investor if you want, but do it with the money you're ready to lose completely, not leverage debt. So really, the only time you should even ponder this question is when you have stable cash flow, you have extra money, not like your last money that you might need to like repair a water heater or buy new tires. You have low interest debt like mortgage, you're interested in the boring 7% return and you won't check your stuff obsessively and make some crazy choices. If your financial situation is right, and most importantly, your mindset is right. Let's look at the math. Now, I live in Toronto, so the houses here are super expensive, so it's gonna be a virtual example. Let's say I have two friends. One of them is Jack for Jack Daniels and another one is John for Johnny Walker. And both of them found a house for $500,000. They got a mortgage for 30 years at 4% and 
and now their mortgage payment is $2,387. So let's say both John and Jack got promoted at work and now after budgeting for everything, they have an extra $1,000 to do whatever they want with it. So John is saying, I hate all of this debt over my shoulders. So I'm gonna be putting the extra $1,000 to pay off my mortgage quicker and once I paid it off and the house is mine, I will invest. Now Jack says, well, I heard that time in the market is more important and the mortgage rate is so low, there's kind of no point in paying it off. So I'd rather be investing in the market. Let's look at 30 years, so 360 months investment horizon and see who will come out on top, at least financially wise. So let's take John, he's paying $3,387 each month towards his mortgage which means he'll be mortgage free in 204 months. Now after that, he's not going crazy. He's staying disciplined and invests the same amount of money for another 156 months to bring us to our investment horizon. This gets him $858,031. And of course, he also has a paid off house. Not bad, not bad at all. Now let's take Jack, say he found a boring market ETF for a mutual fund where on average he was earning 7% per year. And for 360 months he'd been diligently putting $1,000 and investing it without taking it out. What does he get? He gets more than $1.2 million, which is $360,000 more than what John got. And of course, he also has a paid off home of the same value. So what benefits did John get with his way? Well, first of all, it's emotionally. He had that warm feeling that he is not gonna have debt, that the house is his, of course, till he pays the property tax. Since real estate is not very liquid, he avoided the temptation of dipping into his net worth for whatever midlife crisis desires he had. He could also sell the house after 17 years, cash out, and have that equity and move somewhere and spend it before Jack did it. What did Jack get was his way? Well, obviously he got more than $360,000 more than John. Also, his investment and net worth was more liquid, so in case of emergency, he could have tapped into that, which gave him the peace of mind and that investor mindset to do the calm decisions. To complicate things, let's talk a little bit about taxes. For example, Jack had an employer match for 401k or IRSP in Canada, so he was using those accounts to save money, basically deferring tax. What that means is not only he got the free money to invest, but also while he was investing the same thousand dollars as John did, he had physically more cash to play around with, so he could have invested more or spend it on travel, restaurants, kind of thing that make you happy and you don't wait 30 years for it. So I was saying that my friend Jack Daniels is always right and it's always better to invest rather than pay off your low interest debt. Well, mathematically, yes, but psychologically, it is not for everyone. And it is up to you to decide what kind of investor are you but now you'll do it knowingly. Thanks for watching.